Welcome to MuseScore in Minutes, a series of short videos that will quickly get you up and running with MuseScore 2.0. I'm Dr. George Hess. In each of these videos, we'll look at how to use some of the basic functions of the exciting new version of this program. MuseScore is a free and open source music notation program that's a great alternative to Finale and Sibelius. You can download it for free at the website shown on the screen. Lesson 11, Layouts and Parts. With everything entered, we can now turn our attention to the layout. Let's start by setting the view to one or two pages, depending on your screen size. You can see we have a number of problems. The systems aren't centered on the page. Our chord symbols are overlapping the stems here. Uh, the first ending is split between two systems. That's usually not a good idea. And then we have the dreaded hanging system at the end. Let's start with the chord symbols. They're a little too far away from the staff. We can adjust that globally. Go up to the Style menu, select General, Chord Symbols, and then reduce the default vertical position to one and a half spaces. Click Apply and OK. That solves some of the problems, but there's still not enough space between the base and the tab staff. We could increase that globally too, but then it would affect all staves. Since we only need to increase the space between those two staves, we'll use the tools in the Breaks and Spacers palette. There are two spacer tools, one for up and one for down. Select the spacer up and then drag it into the middle of a staff. It'll automatically increase the space. You have to do it for each system. If you need more space, double click on the spacer and it'll click on the handle and drag it up or down. The next step is to reduce the size of the notation. This should solve a lot of the other problems. Select Page Settings from the Layout menu and reduce the scaling until you see three systems on the first page. Now while we're here, let's go ahead and increase the page margins. Let's take, do the odd page, which will be page one, and increase that to 15. And on the even page, page two, we're going to increase it to 25. Click OK. And you can see that most of our problems have been taken care of. But it would be better if it used all of both pages. Let's start by moving the coda to a new system. In the Breaks and Spacers palette, click on the System Break tool and drag it to the measure right before the coda. Now use the same tool to move measures around so that we have the melody on one page and the solo on the second page. And then balance it out a little bit. It's common to indent a coda. Select the first measure of the coda, go up to the Add menu, select Frames, Insert Horizontal Frame. The last step in layout is to look it over carefully for any overlapping entries or other things that should be adjusted. The title and the composer need to be moved. We'll click on that, use the horizontal offset, to center it, and maybe move it up a little bit. And we'll move the composer down a little bit. Now zoom in and scan the score. Don't worry about any of the non-printing characters like spacers or page breaks. To create parts, select Parts from the File menu. Click New All and then OK. You have a separate tab now for each part. 
The parts are dynamically linked to the score. Any changes to entries on the part will be reflected in the score and vice versa. But the layout, including the offsets, is independent. Parts will be saved automatically when you save your file, too. This is the last video in the introductory series on MuseScore 2.0. I hope you've enjoyed it and are on your way to becoming a power user. We'll still be posting tips and tricks along the way, so we hope to see you again soon. This has been MuseScore in Minutes, a production of George Hess Music. For future videos, please subscribe to this channel. And for information about music technology training and clinics, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.